So you want to be a monitor tech. You've seen the heart monitors, you've seen the alarms, you've seen the squiggly lines, and you're trying to make out what all of this means. It's a lot being a monitor tech. There's P waves, QRS complexes, the atria, ventricles. It all sounds like a really big complicated heart puzzle. In this video, I'm breaking it all down into simple beginner friendly language. We're gonna talk about how the heart sends electrical signals. We're gonna talk about what telemetry is, how blood flows through the heart, and how to recognize the difference between a normal and a call the nurse right now rhythm. Let's start with the heart's natural power source, the electrical system. Your heart has a big spark plug called the SA node. That stands for the sinoatrial node, but let's just call it the start button. Every time the SA node fires, it sends an electrical signal through the heart telling it to contract, which means to squeeze. From the SA node, the signal goes across the atria. Those are the top two chambers causing them to squeeze and send blood into the bottom chambers, AKA the ventricles. Then it hits the AV node, gets a little pause, kind of like a loading screen, and continues down through the bundle of hiss and the Purkinje fibers. That tells the ventricles to squeeze. That whole full process, you're like, okay, what does this all mean? It makes up one heartbeat. So when you're looking at an EKG, on the screen, all of that is just one whole process of a heartbeat. Long story short, the electrical signal makes the muscles contract in order. If the signal's off, the rhythm's off, and that's when the patients need us, the monitor techs, to catch it. P wave means the atria is contracting. The QRS means the ventricles are contracting. The T wave means the heart is relaxing. The PR interval is the time it takes for the signal to travel from the atrial to the ventricles. And the QT interval is the time for the heart to contract and reset. Memorizing this might take time, but for, if you remember, P wave equals the top of the heart, QRS equals the bottom of the heart, and T wave equals the reset button, then you'll be on the right track. So now you know about the electrical signals that the heart sends. Now, let's talk about telemetry monitoring. And you're wondering, what is telemetry? You'll hear that word a lot in the hospitals. Telemetry is just a fancy term for remote heart monitoring. That's a mouthful, but it's not really that bad. So patients wear a little box, it's actually not little, it's probably about the size of my hand, um, with wires connected to stickers on their chest. Those stickers are called electrodes. So the box sends the patient's heart rhythm wirelessly to the monitors that we watch. You're not in the room, but you're on the front lines of catching something abnormal. And yes, sometimes the box beeps at 3 a.m. because the patient rolled over and a leaf popped off. Welcome to telemetry life. Now let's break down the famous EKG strip. EKG paper is like graph paper. It moves at 25 millimeters per second. Each small square is 0 0.04 seconds, and every big square is 0 0.20 seconds. Now, if you're not good with math, that's okay. Most jobs have um, calipers that will measure these for you, but you will need to know how to read this whenever you take a paper and pen test, which most jobs will have you do. So you'll use those boxes to measure things like how fast the heart is beating how long the QRS complex is, and how far apart everything is. Seems like a lot, but really once you get used to it, it's so easy to re uh, remember. One key thing to remember is that if the distance between each beat is consistent, you've probably got a regular rhythm. But if the spacing is all over the place, it's time for you to dig deeper and see what's going on with the heart. Now that we know what the electrical signals and waves looks like, Let's talk about the three main rhythm types you'll see. So there are sinus rhythms. These start in the SA node and are usually your normal everyday rhythms. Atrial rhythms. These come from the top chambers, but not the SA node. Think atrial fibrillation or atrial flutter. 
Ventricle rhythms, these come from the bottom chambers and are usually the ones that make you stop when you, what you're doing and call the nurse, like VTAC or VFib. Here's a quick cheat code. If you see sinus, think safe. If you see atrial, think alert. If you see ventricle, think emergency. You'll get better at spotting these the more strips you read. So what do you do when you actually spot something that doesn't look right on the monitor? First thing you need to do is breathe. Then you're gonna ask yourself, does this look like artifact? Artifact is movement that you'll see on the monitor. Kind of looks like little fuzzy grass. Um, if the patient's moving around, that can cause artifacts. There could be a loose lead. Sometimes patients might have a cell phone or an electrical device. If it's close enough to the box, it could cause it there to be some kind of artifact. Second thing you need to ask yourself, is the patient actually still connected to the monitor? You'd be surprised how many times I see a systole on the monitor, but the patient's not even wearing it. It's the wires are, or the electrodes are connected to the bed and it's showing a false rhythm. The other thing you need to ask yourself, does this rhythm match what my patient's been doing the whole time? Think of these things before you actually alert the nurse. Now, if it's real and serious, like there's no heartbeat, there's rapid VTAC, or there's sudden asystole, your job is to notify the nurse immediately. Going to verify it's not a false alarm, print the strip, document the time, and then alert the nurse or the doctor. You're not diagnosing, you're not treating, you're catching the issues fast and getting the right people involved. All right, there you have it. The beginner's guide to what's going on behind the blips, bleeps, and bumps on the monitor screen. If this has helped you feel a little more confident as a new or future monitor tech, go ahead and tap that like and subscribe button. I've got more videos coming to walk you through studying, working full 12 hour shifts, and building your resume. Until then, keep watching those monitors like a boss. And I'll see you later. Bye.